Good morning, and welcome to the Historica Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We welcome all of you present and those joining us through live stream. We pray that you are all in good health, and we ask that all present respect the instructions given by our ushers and guidelines in place to prevent the spread of COVID-19, including using hand sanitizers, maintaining a distance of two meters, and wearing face masks when entering, leaving, or moving within the church. We will not have a collection at this mass, but there are collection boxes provided for you at the entrance and the exit of the church. Thank you for supporting our Basilica Parish. At the time of Holy Communion, we will give you further instructions. At the end of mass, we ask you to exit through the main doors at the back of the church. Our presider today is Father Cecil Critch. Kindly stand for our opening hymn, 437 in the CBW. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everyone. Today we celebrate the Feast of Christ the King, and this is the last Sunday of our liturgical year A, and next week we begin the first of Advent, and we begin with the readings of the Gospel of Mark. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries today, we ask the Lord to come into our hearts and to forgive us for the times we have failed to be kind, to be merciful and compassionate to those who are poor especially. We ask the Lord's forgiveness.
Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation set free from slavery may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his scattered sheep, so will I seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed my sheep with justice. As for you, my flock, thus says the Lord God, I shall judge between one sheep and another between rams and goats. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want.
I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a man. For as all die in Adam, so we will be made alive in Christ. But each is his own order. Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to the one who put all things in subjection under him, so that God may be all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he put the sheep will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. 
Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come you that are blessed by my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. And then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food? Or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it for the least, one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it to me. The Gospel of the Lord. As we said, we, today we celebrate the last Sunday of the church year, the Feast of Christ the King. And this feast uh, was established in 1925 by Pope Pius XI. He instituted this feast to show the divine authority and power of Jesus Christ in the midst of growing secularism, Nazism, as well as fascist and communist dictatorships, especially in Europe at the time, that time of 1920s. Today, by and large, kings are figureheads, largely a reminder of history. Kings of the past, though, had ultimate sovereignty and power and authority over people. When the Jewish people wanted a king, if you remember in the Old Testament, they were looking for a king. And, of course, Samuel, who was the voice of God, the prophet of God, say, why do you need a king? God does not want you to have a king. They will just take your young men from you and bring them into battle and bring them back in order to bury them. But they wanted a king like all the other tribes and nations around. And as we know what happened with the first king Saul and the subsequent 20 kings of Israel, they spent their time and money on warfare, which resulted in the people being taken off to Babylon as prisoners, losing their freedom and their young, dead, in terrible wars. So the image of Christ the king is difficult, you know, for most of us to get our heads around. If we look at the image of the shepherd king in the first reading, that may satisfy us. In the first reading from the prophet Ezekiel, another who was the voice of God, speaking for God, and even after the chosen people had turned away from God, God still did not abandon his people. He says, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed. I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. So we can see Jesus as that good shepherd king that leads us and guides us and heals us. And the gospel of today speaks to us of our off judgment, of our judgment by our king at the end of our lives. For the Lord who looks at the human heart will hold us accountable for the conduct of our lives. And how will we be judged? It will not be for the knowledge we have gained, certainly not for the fame we have won or the wealth that we have acquired. We will be judged by our love of others, by our practice of the corporal works of mercy, as outlined in that scripture, Matthew. Our eternal, eternal destiny will hinge on how we did good deeds of human kindness for others because Christ our King has chosen to make himself known in the cries of the lonely, the outcast, and the marginalized of our world. We touch the face of God each day when we touch the face of God in the face of others that we meet along our journey, especially the vulnerable and the suffering, by resp respecting and responding to the brokenness of them in their confusion and pain. So the Gospel today encourages us to reflect seriously on how we are in our relationships with others, with one another, how we have fallen short in serving Christ to the least of our brothers and sisters. I was hungry and you gave me food. I was hungry for a word of encouragement and you praised me. I was hungry for a word of appreciation and you thanked me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was thirsty for friendship and you stepped, stopped to chat with me. I was thirsty for justice, and you came to my help. 
I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was a refugee, new to your country, and you welcomed me into your neighborhood. I was unemployed and you gave me a job. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was naked for want of self-esteem and after a troubled childhood and you covered me with self-worth. I was stripped of dignity and respect because of gossip and slander and you clothed me with the garments of truth. I was sick and you visited me. I was sick with doubt and fear and your smile and cheerful attitude brightened my day and lifted my burdens. I was wounded by failure and disappointment and you supported and healed me. I was a prisoner and you came to see me. I was a prisoner of addictions and you gave me new hope. I was a prisoner of isolation and fear and you rescued me. I was homeless and you sheltered me. I was homeless for want of sympathy, tenderness and understanding and you listened to me. I was homeless for want of love and acceptance and you took me into your heart. You know, St. John Chrysostom, the great saint and early church father of the 4th century said, and I quote, If you cannot find Christ in the beggar at the church door, you will not find him in the chalice. If you cannot find Christ in the beggar at the church door, you will not find him in the chalice. Christ our King rules in our hearts and in our world, and when we give up our time, energy, resources, in everyday ordinary acts of kindness and love, we are then Christ's body to the world. When we receive him into our hearts at communion and bring him from this church out to the world, it is then that we become Eucharist for others and one another. If the least of his brothers and sisters are to experience Christ's loving touch, his healing hands, and his forgiving words, it has to be through you and me, through each of us. So today we reflect that may we care for one another and be loving shepherds for one another as Christ is for each one of us. We pray together our creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From then he would come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We turn with great trust now in our Heavenly Father, trusting that God will hear and answer all the prayers we have in our hearts today. For Pope Francis and Archbishop Peter, who all who hold positions of leadership in the church, that they may guide the people of God with the heart of Christ, the true shepherd. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For global leaders and all who hold positions of authority, that they may serve all people with humility and with concern for the vulnerable, the poor, and the needy members of our society. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For the families of our archdiocese, that our coming preparation and celebration of the Advent season may be a time of reflection on how we may come closer to Christ as we support the poor, the homeless, and provide comfort for all who bear heavy burdens. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world and in our homes, that selfishness, hatred, and injustice give way to reconciliation, healing, and peace among those estranged from one another, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ, the light of God, may be the health and hope of the sick for all who provide compassionate care for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died and for families who mourn the death of loved ones, 
we pause and remember all of our departed loved ones. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And speaking of love for one another, we pray that one of the best ways to show our love for other people is during this COVID time to wear our mask, to socially distance, uh, to follow all the rules of the health authorities, and uh, use hand sanitizers, all those things. So we pray that all people in our province may follow the rules and that we may keep this COVID-19 at bay. We will not let that become a big problem again in our province. So we pray for the protection of Our Lady and for our own cooperation in that effort. We pray to the Lord. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the grace and blessings you give us every day. We make our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Good Shepherd and our King. Amen. Wash away our iniquity, O Lord, and cleanse us of our sin. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Let us pray as we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you. We humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness, as eternal priest and king of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross, as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption, and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to your majesty as an, an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and light, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love and peace. And so with all the angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Eucharistic Prayer 4. 
You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. And therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send your forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, as your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ, which has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your body and whose and members of your son whose body and blood we have communed. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, with all the bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters, inspiring us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to peace and justice, to truth and freedom, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ and all the day whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. And grant also to us that when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with all the apostles and martyrs, St. John the Baptist, and with all the saints. We shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. with confidence to our Heavenly Father in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign 
forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And we share that peace of Christ with one another. And behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter on the Bible, but only say the word and my soul shall be saved. An act of spiritual communion. A prayer for those who are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. To ensure that the reception of Holy Communion takes place in a safe and respectful manner, we ask that you please follow these instructions. Instead of individually replying Amen upon receiving the host, there will be one general attestation of Amen before distribution begins. Please remain standing in your pew until invited forward by an usher. Ensure your face mask is correctly worn before coming forward and maintain a two meter social distance in the communion line. As you approach the front of the line, sanitize your hands before receiving communion. Bow towards the host. In silence, receive the host in your hands. Step aside to consume the host. Return to your pew as directed by the ushers. Those unable to receive Holy Communion in the hand may come forward to receive a blessing. The body of Christ. with an 
Thank you. 
Uh, just a couple of reminders from the bulletin. Please pick up a bulletin. In there, there will be an envelope for our annual appeal for the Christmas hampers. We have a greater need this year than ever. So if you can please be generous in donation to our Basilica Christmas hampers for the poor of our city, that would be very much appreciated. Next week, uh, our first Sunday of Advent, we have the annual Advent Scripture and Advent Carols Festival that's on next Sunday night, the first Sunday of Advent next week at uh, 7 o'clock. So uh, if you want to attend in person, and that's hopefully we will have the numbers of 100 next week, we hope, and uh, you're gonna pl you can uh, phone the office and uh, put your name in if you'd like to attend. But again, we're doing it live stream, so you can be at home and you can watch it at home as well. So I'll pass that around to everyone. And uh, at the back, our Basilica Heritage Foundation store is open, so you can pick up some nice Christmas ornaments and gifts as well. Thank you. Let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glory and obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. And the Lord be with you. And my only God bless all of us today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go now in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Our missioning hymn can be found in the CBW 565. 